I just had a really, really good listening session with the Fio M11. Uh, I got Aurelius, I think is the name of that. It's a balanced 4.4 uh, tube amplifier and the uh, absolutely gorgeous looking and gorgeous sounding QDC uh, Anole VX. These are really, really nice. I think they benefited from a fantastic combo today. I'll try it with other dApps, but today was a really good day. These sound epic. I'm going to go off the rails a little bit like I usually do, but I think those are my best videos. So, sorry to file in advance because they're going to be part of that. But before I get to that, I said to people when I did my hype video about this that this was about... The, you couldn't discern the difference between, say, a track like uh, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet between a DX220 and, and this M11. And I, you can't. Not with the EX1000s. But there's really no difference. To say otherwise is to... Mm, I don't know. I think you're extending yourself. I think you've got to assume that most people are using different IMs than you and music is personal and there's so many variables that you can't really say much. I personally with my library could not tell the difference except for the price. I stand by that. There were people that interestingly enough brought up stuff like the Sony WM1Z and other stuff and that's what stimulated my video. I won't get into that but it's interesting because I will say that I'll compare this to the WM1Z today, but not on its own. On its own, it's more of a WM1A. It's quite neutral, but it's got a musical sense to it. It's not stone cold, dry reference because I wouldn't, I couldn't enjoy that at all. So I'm I'm playing with this today, and I decided what I wanted to do was I wanted to go ahead and that's just got a weird color, didn't it? What is that from? Whatever. I decided I wanted to play with this, which is a Aureolus, that that's, can't be the pronunciation, that sounds weird. An amp that was designed for use for the WM series, and the, also the ZX300. As you can see, it looks a lot like the input-output of the, uh, or the 4.4 and 3.5 of the WM brothers, and also the ZX. And it's designed for it, it's a tube, you can see the tubes inside there. So when you use a tube, you get that warm analog vinyl kind of sound that goes with it, which turns this into something that sounds more like a WM1Z or a KNN8 in its sound tonality, because it, the N8 is using tubes, and you're using tubes now with the M11. The M1Z has a naturally kind of a warm sound, and then when you use the vinyl DSP that they added on the later firmware, it's very similar to the KNN8. And the KNN8 is very expensive, and the WM1Z is very expensive as well. So you got your M11 and you're liking it and you're having a good time and you bought your cover because they didn't send you one with it but it's 500 bucks. Life is tough. And you got your cover and you're thinking I, I want to go I want to change it up a little bit. I want to I love the interface I love everything about it but I want to change it up a little bit. Um, the way that you would do that is this Potapita stick stuff Potapita actually comes with the amp. So now we're now we went from the case that was on the M11 and we switched it to put it in its plastic one which is permanently connected to uh, this one. And then we take a very nice cable brand can't remember the name it says it on it I think 4.4 there's a theme there. There's your And now we are good to go. This combo with the Anoli VX was an epic listening session today. I was absolutely floored and stunned. Um, so video for this is going to be coming up. But if you got the M11 and there's a lot of you that this thing's selling like hotcakes and you want to really take something that is just sounds awesome with it, it, it makes a clear difference. It takes us from a neutralish. Uh, WM1A sounding device to the N8 or the WM1Z with the DSP activated but you're doing it with real tubes so it's not like digital sound processing it's just 
it's not software it's it's hardware this is the hardware right here it's actually physical tubes um, and then you can you could get a rotational app if you wanted and then do it like this at your house the home version of what you take on the go if you were to do such a thing now I'm going to switch gears because that's what this video is kind of about I discovered something uh, on the internet about a year ago, but didn't think much about it until I started to watch things on HeadFi and start to kind of connect dots. So this is tinfoil hat stuff, and it seems like quite a departure what I'm talking about, because it is, but whatever, it's my channel. Deal with it. It's going to be in the title. Um, the European Union made a, a lawsuit against, I think it was Samsung and Apple and uh, maybe just them, and then with threats to expand it to others if they were to you know effectively determine there's something I think that they call it obsolete obsolescence I think is what the term the European Union uses to put a name to an event that happens when Samsung and Apple and other major manufacturers take devices and f update their firmware and in the firmware is instructions that actually decrease the performance of the device in many w parameters and the response from the companies was they did that because they're trying to save battery because the uh, stuff is going to be outdated. But the thing is, the European Union said, but you didn't advertise that. You didn't say, hey, this update's going to make your device last longer, but it might slow it down. Um, because nobody would do that. Nobody would be like, yeah, let me download this so I can slow my stuff down. And the the argument and the reason that the European Union got so into this was because that it wasn't just that event it was the fact that the company that would release the firmware that would degrade the performance would very very quickly introduce the replacement item this was a pattern that was similar in Samsung and Apple's practice that they would release an update that would specifically decrease perform sometimes it would be related to the screen because they say they're trying to save screen life like people keep these things for 10 years and also slow it down and that's to say battery life and every kind of metric that you would notice and think this thing's getting kind of mm, sluggish uh, would be a direct result of the update that you accepted and then in a month they would offer they'd already be advertising but they would physically be selling in you know brick and mortar online shops the replacement for the device that you thought uh was not performing like it used to so maybe ought to maybe it's time to move on and goddamn lucky they just introduced the latest one so shit might as well move on um and the european union said that's that's quite convenient isn't it and then they pushed back and said no we did that to save the lifespan of the device when mm, internal memos from the companies and their lack of pointing that out to the consumer kind of points otherwise now can a chinese company whether it's a name any company that uses an android re reshelled refurbished android is it possible for them to do the same thing that their essential business idols the people that they aspire to be which is market dominant fan loyal uh companies and products would any company that like this company or any other company that builds around uh, an Android or even Apple not want to emulate that practice if that was what helped make that other you know companies with massive market shares so popular why would they not do that so my advice to you is that if you get an Android device like uh, like an M11 or anything made from any company and you think you know what I like the way this is and I don't need anything else have you ever found yourself updating firmware and not being exactly sure why you're doing it? You know, like, and then asking, what, what's the log? What does it say this thing's fixing? And, and, but you already downloaded it, and then you're thinking, this is different, man. I can't see something. Like, something doesn't work as good as it used to. You know what I'm saying? No? I've watched people on head five for years go through this cycle of I just updated the firmware now I can't you know a B C and D and then they fix a and D and then B and C never kind of get rectified and it's part of their movement on some people like put that on the company but a lot of people think this is just the way it goes if you don't need a firmware update on a device don't get it I'm never gonna update the M11 it, it does what I want there's some people that need little tweaks and fixes but I'm I'm not going to update because it it plays music really good and I don't need it to do anything else for me it's not lacking in anything if, if I get rid of it in the future 
for another reason, then it would be up to that other person to update it if they chose to. But I, I'm not going to update the firmware. And please don't argue that the company would never do that because that's foolish talk. That's foolish talk. These are these are business is with the profit margins and targets and sales goals and if they could they would can they of course they can i'm sure it's easier on the android platform than it is on uh apple but for apple it would be easy because apple makes apple so my advice to people out there is if you got a device and it's android based and you see a firmware update and you don't really think that you need it don't get it Can you get what I'm saying? So I had an epic listening session today. Uh, I was looking at it and thought, could this be somebody's end game? So this is me wrapping it up at 1053. Could this be somebody's end game F for under a grand and then spend uh, the rest of the booty booty on this? You could walk out of the hobby and be satisfied. What would be the one way that this could not go right? Mm, firmware updates. The hardware itself is not going to start to get slow by itself, but it can if updates to do other things end up causing bad effects or the tinfoil hat that's done on purpose so my message to you is you're looking at a rig that i could say i could i could do this you hear those that's a japanese some old person's probably getting heat stroke it's quite hot don't be foolish don't trust anybody Accept your own common sense. If you got a, a device and it works and performs well, and there's a firmware update, mm, be absolutely 100% sure that you really need what it's mm, updating for. And if you don't, then do not. And you will extend the life and performance of that device because there's no reason for it to do otherwise. The battery could slowly start to not fully charge or hold its charge long. The screen quality could, but God, that would take a long time. Otherwise, the the memory, the the processor, all of the other elements within the device are not going to age in a way that you're going to notice in the course of a 12 to 24 months. But if you're constantly updating firmware, you could seem to, at the end of the 24 months, be like, this is just getting too slow. If there's any doubt, talk to somebody that's been playing with these for years, and they'll say, I don't know if he's thinking too much, but yeah, make sure you only update if you really need it. That's what I'm telling you. I had a great listening experience today. I thought this could be somebody's end of the end of the line, get out of the hobby. What could be the one reason that someone could come in and say, yeah, no way. Android based. How could you prevent that variable? Don't update it. Why would I not do that? What does it not do that you want it to do? And it, go check Google if you want to. I think it's called obsolescence or something like that. And, and educate yourself about the outer parts of this hobby and the ability that companies have to uh, manipulate the market, to stimulate your interest in moving forward, moving on, moving up. What are the things? Is it, is it simply you know, print and uh, net advertising? Is there other ways that they can move you off of your spot onto the new spot they want you to move to? Yes, there are. And their they're code, their lines of code, and you are the person that puts it on yourself. And a lot of times you put it on and don't actually have a clear reason to do so. So be careful. Remember this video for years and years. As long as Android exists, and people are offering firmwares to fix stuff. If you play with your device and you think, I, I'm not having any of the issues that are claimed, then back up. Don't update automatically. Think very carefully before you proceed because there's companies much bigger than these companies that are already getting caught in lies. And if you think about business, it makes total sense. That's why it's, the arguments are ridiculous. And the more you look at it, the more it seems ridiculous, coincidental, um, convenient and is that something that could be ported over to Chinese audio DAP manufacturers I would argue it's already happened I've felt like it's occurred to me and devices that I've used in the past where I've updated and thought that stuff was different than it used to be and I didn't like the new version and then I was wondering why did I bother updating again I forgot what the reason was you know 
they jump on and like new update download available check link oh shit let me get it it's so busy it's a slow download and in that moment i'm i'm not sure why am i even why am i updating again what so some of you out there might be like i had a critical thing i need to deal with that's that's cool i dig it and the, the other people out there i don't know think carefully before you take this device and pull down a whole new set of instructions think carefully from this video for the rest of your audio life if it's related to something that can be adjusted by firmware before you proceed consider the reasons that you're doing so and if it's worth it to you because it might be it might not be so this turned into a video that was supposed to be kind of something and became something else this is in no way related to file like i said i'm gonna keep this i i, I got rid of lots of expensive dApps and I'll get more and then if depending on how much I like them but for this price I can get people say what is that and I'll say it's 500 bucks go get it no hesitation what's that it's 400 bucks hard to find get it if you can you turn it into basically a, a KNN8 with a better screen a bigger screen a faster UI and a tonality and sound that is very hard to discern splitting hairs making shit up basically but the firmware think about it before you keep going seriously remember this video and I'm out